everyone and welcome back to the channel. We left you guys off last time on the last video where we have ordered our mini splits Mr. Cools for the house. We are still waiting on getting those. Um, hopefully maybe later on this week we'll get those so we can start getting those installed next week. But I'm out here in the garden. Figured I'd check it out, make sure things are growing good and doing good. And I'll tell you what guys, it's only been like a week since uh, you guys have seen the garden and there is so much more going on around here. I do have a little bit of things I'm gonna tend to out here, but nothing too crazy. Um, I do, however, have a few things around the house outside that I need to get done today. So hopefully we can get all of that stuff done before the end of the day. Welcome back to the channel, guys. So today, since it's such perfect weather outside, I decided to bring out my OTOR Laser Master 3, which is a laser engraver and a laser cutter. And I'm gonna be making something for the rabbit hutch that I've been waiting to do, but we didn't have our rabbits before. So now that we got them, we got them named, we have everything ready to go. I'm ready to get on this project. I got some scrap wood already cut out, ready to go. So I say, let's get it. So if you guys are wondering what this is, this is a piece of, <laughs> aluminum siding that I have left over so when you're laser cutting on anything I found out you don't want to have anything below what you're trying to cut out but you don't want to get cut or messed up so I have like my own makeshift um, like 400 millimeter by 400 millimeter guide that I printed out with this thing already but I don't want that thing to get messed up so if you just put any metal, these lasers, at least the one I have, it won't cut through metal like this. So I can just lay a piece of aluminum down and then put whatever I want to cut out or laser engrave on top of it. And the laser won't be able to penetrate through the aluminum and it won't mess up my guide uh, sheet that I made. Want to mention guys, we are so close to 45,000 subscribers. So if you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe, help us out, get us to our goal of 45,000. We are so close. It would greatly help us out. Thank you so much. Well, my zucchinis are still growing. They're still big. I did go through here not too long ago and actually removed some of the, the leaves from the bottom so it can have more of an airflow down there. But I don't know if you guys can tell, but it didn't matter. <laughs> the leaves have taken back over again, so I will need to remove some more leaves. Um, I'm just checking to see if there's any zucchinis that are ready to be picked because I do plan on making stir fry for dinner tonight and it would be super good to add some fresh garden zucchinis. I've got all kinds of flowers and zucchinis growing. But I don't see any that are ready for picking yet. Nope. So I guess that... I just have one zucchini for my uh, stir fry tonight. That should be fine. If there was more, ooh, there was a bug in my hair. Ugh. <laughs> Crawling around, now I'm all itchy. <laughs> but one should be okay for the stir fry for now. Hopefully, maybe tomorrow, maybe there'll be another one. I don't know, making it tonight, so. That's okay. There's still some zucchinis in there that are growing. They're just not quite big enough. Look at my tomato plants. They are very big and growing very well. Uh, there is a lot of tomatoes that are growing on here. They're just not ready yet for the picking. Look at that group of tomatoes down there. There's a big old hunk. And then I got a big fat tomato right here. It's not quite ready for the picking, but they're getting there. I got all kinds of flowers and buds growing. I'm coming out here and doing my little tap, spread that pollen around. I remember that from last year. That was some good advice I got from Chrissy over at Paragon. She told me about kind of just tapping them so the pollen kind of falls off the flowers and kind of helps uh, create more tomatoes. Do that to my cherry tomatoes here. But look how many cherry tomatoes I have. There's like a big cluster of them right here. Another big cluster of them right here. They're not quite ready. They still got a little bit more to go, but I can't wait to have those 
ready for picking for Anthony because like I said, I, the whole reason I planted cherry tomatoes was specifically for him. I'm not a huge fan of them, but he loves them on his salads and he likes to just eat them. So I'm sure he'll be the first one to taste test those. <laughs> seems like every day I come out here to look at the garden and my cucumbers are growing bigger and bigger every day. I'm constantly have to like fix them so they go up the trellis because as you guys can tell they kind of lean out of the garden beds like so. So I've just been kind of picking up the, the, the vines and sticking them onto the fence so that way they can kind of keep crawling up the trellis here but some of the stems just aren't quite long enough. You guys like my special glasses I have on? <laughs> These are so you can look at the laser. I had to make some adjustments on the laser. It was going way, way too slow. It was like cutting through the wood and it wasn't really like etching the way I wanted it to. So redid it. Now we're on track, writing some names out. It's looking good so far. And my peas have flowers actually growing and blooming on them. They're not quite as tall yet as my cucumbers are. I can't wait for them to get that big. So this is all covered with the peas just growing up on top. But for now, the little ones, those are fine. I've been taking these as well and kind of twisting them around the, the fence here so they can grow up. There was a couple here like this one. It was too short, so I had to kind of wait a little bit and kind of push it in there. There's a couple more. Oh, this one does not look good. This one right here is kind of struggling a little bit. <laughs> They're all intertwined with all my carrots behind there. My carrots are poking through the fence, but that's okay. Um, maybe I'll have to trim some of those carrot stems. I'll have to look because I'm sure there's a, some recipes or something you can do with the stems of the carrots. I'm sure they have flavor and stuff in them. Mm, they smell really good. Maybe I'll taste a little. Mm. Well, check it out guys. I think these signs came out very, very nice. <laughs> I think they look really good too on this rabbit hutch and it just looks so good. So now they have their names on top of it. I think that's so cool that I was able to make that out of my lazy engraver. And I've been wanting to make more things around the house, different signs, different things, cool little art stuff for the walls. Roxanne wants me to make something for her kitchen, which I'm planning on doing very, very soon. But I just thought that was really cool. I asked Melanie um, if she wanted me to make her some. So I'm actually right now in the process of making Melanie and Gary some. And we're just going to have to see how those things come out. But as you guys can see, it's getting it. So very awesome. Everything looks like it's growing and doing very well. I was out here yesterday when I watered and I actually put some miracle grow on everything so maybe by the end of today things are going to be like two times the size it seems to be how it happens after a miracle grow it the next day everything just really takes off <laughs> some more 
But the reason why I wanted to come out here, besides from checking on the garden, is I need to refill my hummingbird feeder. This seems to be one of the favorite ones around here. They have totally sucked this one dry. And then there's another one over here in the trees, kind of by my, uh, my pear tree, uh, that they seem to really enjoy that one as well. I did, however, notice for like the last like three weeks, two or three weeks, the hummingbirds have been kind of MIA. I haven't really seen too many, but I've heard them in the trees and stuff. They just weren't coming over to the hummingbird feeders. And then just maybe three or four days ago, I was sitting outside and a bunch of them started popping up and eating out of the hummingbird feeders that I have on Thunderdome's deck. And I remember kind of last year, something similar happened. I had all the hummingbird feeders out. They were going crazy eating it. And then they just disappeared for a couple weeks. So I don't know if maybe they're maybe laying their eggs, sitting on their eggs and waiting for them to hatch and then they come back out again after the eggs hatch, I'm not sure. But kind of something similar is happening like it did last year. So need to refill these, hang them back up so I can bring the hummingbirds back around because I miss seeing them. You girls ready? Hmm? You in your spot there, Jaina? She likes loafing there underneath the zucchini plants and in the grass. I'm pretty sure it's a nice and cool spot. It's a little warm out here this morning. <laughs> Watch out, Lily. Good girl, Mora. Come on, Jaina. Come on, Jaina. Jaina. Come on. Jaina. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. This is the other favorite hummingbird feeding spot. So I need to fill up this one too. For my hummingbird feeders of food, I just used this Hummer's Glory. I get it at the Dollar Tree. So $1.25, it's not hard to make, and the hummingbirds really seem to like it. Wait, hopefully uh, hummingbirds will start coming around those ones again so I can start watching them because I really enjoy looking, really enjoy looking at the hummingbirds. So another exciting surprise that I discovered yesterday is my gladiolas are getting their flowers on them and they're, I can't wait till, till they bloom and I forgot what colors they were so I'm curious to have them bloom and see what colors they are but look. This one right here is the prettiest and the biggest one so far. But I have three gladiolas that are starting to pop out, which is exciting, which means the rest of them are coming soon too. And another good thing is they're all kind of staggered as they bloom. So I'll, I'll have uh, gladiolas blooming for a little while. So that's exciting. I see the dogs have been enjoying the pool. It is filthy, right, Sylvia? <laughs> they get it dirty like every couple days so I gotta clean it out so it's supposed to be a hot day today so I guess I'll clean out the pool so they can have a nice clean pool for today right Jana you want a clean pool she's already hot Jaina is wasting no time getting inside the pool to cool off. I guess she was ready for it. So I guess it was a good call to fill it up. So I think Jaina and Luna are the only two dogs that use the pool to its advantage. I have caught Mora playing inside the pool, but she won't let anybody know that she likes playing in the pool. She just, she does it on the sly when nobody's looking. 
We did go ahead and buy a couch. We got it like literally a couple days before we left on our vacation. It's a perfect couch for us. We have the nice loaf seat right here, which Anthony has claimed that spot as his. And we have two seaters right there, which is perfect for Wyatt and myself. This couch is very comfy and very nice, and it actually fits in here perfect. I love it. Another thing that is new in here is this cool pillow here. It says, all good eggs. And that was actually a gift for my grandma's friend, Joan, um, in Vegas there when we came to visit. She uh, gave me this, and I think it looks perfect here on the couch. And as you guys know, we love eggs around here. We have just so many eggs, and they're all good eggs. <laughs> Another new piece in here is this uh, like hope chest thing that we got. And actually guys, this chest is a very interesting story in how we found it. Um, when we were in Vegas, uh, and uh, Wyatt and I, we were walking, we went to the pool, come to find out the pool was closed and wasn't working. And as we were coming back to grandma's house, um, we walked past the dumpster right there and it was sitting right out front of the dumpster area. I seen it and I was like, oh my goodness, this is beautiful. So Wyatt and I picked it up and we carried it back over to my grandma's house. I showed Anthony and was like, hey, do you think we could use this in the house? And he was like, absolutely we could use that in the house. So we brought it home and we're gonna use it as a coffee table. We figured we'll store some blankets and extra pillows in there. Just for when we have house guests, now that we have a couch that people can sleep on, I think it is a perfect addition to the house. So with this new Hope Chest being the perfect, addic uh, perfect addition, we do have plans for this chest. Last cool new thing we got, and this is a gift from Dawn over at Hat Creek Homestead. It is a little plaque thing for Tank, and I think it's perfect right here. I have Tank's little sweater right next to it. So I think that is a very nice gift that Don, uh, I received from Don. So thank you so much, Don from Hat Creek, for my plaque thing for Tank. It, it's perfect in here. So that's pretty much all that has happened inside the house since we finished the kitchen. We do still have plenty more work to do in here. The house is not done yet. But stick around guys, we'll be working on it here and hopefully get this house done very, very soon. We have started collecting our eggs. Actually, we've been water glassing our eggs and it all started the week we left on our vacation. So Mel and Gary, when they were taking care of our chickens, they were bringing our eggs over here and putting them inside our nice bucket here. And there's probably about maybe seven dozen eggs inside this bucket so far. Um, we are gonna continue to fill this up and hopefully have enough eggs to get us through the winter because last winter, our chickens kind of went dormant. They weren't really laying too many. It was like once er one every couple days or so. So hopefully this winter we won't run into that problem where we don't have any more eggs. Some of you may not know what water glassing is. Um, basically, it's just taking a five gallon food grade bucket. Um, I filled it. I put in, I think it was five gallons of water in here with one package of pickling lime. You add it all into the bucket, mix it in, and then over time you just start grabbing your eggs and throwing them in the bucket. You do not need to wash your eggs. And the fresher the eggs, the better. Um, so what we've been doing is just, as we pick the eggs for the day, go out there, pick the eggs, and then bring them right in here and just drop them right inside the bucket. And from what I've read and research I have done, I have found that the eggs will last up to 18 months inside the lime powder solution bucket. So we should be good to go on eggs, definitely for a while. On top of saving all of the eggs for the water glassing, I have been saving some, not only just so we have eggs to use to eat for the week, but I also been saving them because I have something planned for these eggs that are is also another good way to use up if you have an overabundance of eggs like we do because of all our chickens. 
or it's just something simple and easy and quick to make, a little bit of help, more of a healthier choice option than in the freezer section. And I will tell you guys what that is right now. All right, so now that I got that done, there is one more thing I wanna get done today. And I believe Roxanne showed you guys already, but our awesome, awesome dumpster find that we had when we were in Las Vegas. And that's this chest over here. So I'm gonna grab this and bring it outside and start working on it. You mind helping me real quick? Sure. <laughs> Roxanne's over here doing her thing. I'm gonna grab that side. I just wanna put it outside and get it ready because it needs to be fixed, guys. I don't know how much she showed you, but it's pretty, uh, there's like scratches all over it and stuff. So it needs to be fixed. See the scratches, guys? Hopefully I'm gonna be able to get that fixed though. So this chest, I'm going to be sanding it down. It needs a lot of work. Like I said, there's a lot of divots and stuff in it right here. Um, it was just thrown away. Like Roxanne said, someone just put it in the dumpster and she grabbed it and I told her, you know what? I could probably sand this down and stain it, make it match for inside the house. And so that's exactly what I'm going to do. So if you guys have not figured it out, we are going to be making some breakfast sandwiches. Uh, school is out now for the summer. So these are a good, quick and easy breakfast to just pull out of the freezer and zap it in the microwave. It's a little bit more of a healthier choice than buying the frozen ones in the frozen section as they're full of preservatives and all that stuff. And it's also a very good use of eggs. It takes 12 eggs to make six muffins. So I'm going to be making two batches of these today. Um, you can throw them in the freezer up to a month. You pull them out, you just zap them in the microwave for one minute and you have a homemade cooked breakfast sandwiches. Those breakfast sandwiches are gonna be so nice to have now that they're all done. So that worked out pretty well. I, however, am not going to let all of those eggs go to waste. I'm gonna put those shells to good use. I already have my eggs disinfecting right now on the stove with some boiling water and I plan on making calcium powder for my tomato plants out there. They desperately need some calcium and I don't have any calcium powder but I have plenty of eggshells. Um, never done this before so this is the first time and I'm very anxious and curious to see how this calcium powder from eggshells works.
was fairly simple to make my calcium powder. Um, I ended up getting about a half a jar of calcium powder or calcium, yeah, powder <laughs> out of a dozen eggs. So that was pretty good. I'm, I'm gonna put this on my tomatoes tonight when I water. I'm not gonna do it right now because it's kind of the heat of the day. So I wanna make sure I spread this around and then water it so it gets absorbed into the ground. But I think I found a new thing I'm gonna keep trying on the garden. I like it. Now that I'm done inside the house, go out here and see if Anthony needs a hand. Well, I smoothed out all the dents and stuff, but um, I only got 220 grit sandpaper. And I was hoping it would take it off, but it ain't taking it off, so. I see a little bit it's taken off. Yeah, it's but... starting to, but well, I think I need it... to get like 100 grit. Yeah, what do you said? You got 220? That's the only thing I have. Yeah, I think like that... finishing. I was going to say, I think that's more for like smoothing it out, which... It is, but I was hoping. Yeah. <laughs> I was hoping it would take it all off. Yeah. I mean, it's smooth. It is very smooth. <laughs> but now I need to strip it down so I can stain it. Good. I have to go to the store and get some more sandpaper. Yeah. Well, I'm sure we'll be going in the town the next few days, so when we're there, we'll just pick it up some uh, bright sandpaper. Yeah, we should be good. And then uh, make this thing still, to totally match inside the house. I would say still a really good find. Oh, yeah. That just got to get some sandpaper. You know, I guess it's true what they say. One man's trash is another man's treasure. Mm -hmm. We didn't finish everything we wanted to get done, but I think we made great progress today. Oh yeah, we good got, progress. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff done, even though we didn't finish everything. <laughs> no, that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes, guys. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for watching, and remember to subscribe if you are not subscribed. We are so close to 45,000 subscribers. Thank you guys again for watching. Can't wait to see you guys on the next one. Until next time, bye!